Uh, yep, so I started my talk uh, when data can't be open, <coughs> securing sensitive spatial data with open source software. Um, as mentioned, I work uh, for Thusa, um, we're a geospatial software consultancy. Um, this talk is about our experience uh, helping out, uh, help, uh, helping out um, the Centre for Urban Research, which is uh, part of RMIT University, on their urban observatory project. Um, and there's also their other logos are their funders for that project. Uh, so a bit about this talk. Um, I'll go over the motivation of what I'm talking about when I say when data can't be open. Um, an overview of our software stack for the Urban Observatory and what's involved in that. Um, uh, how we use Docker, which is part of, part of that, uh, and the deployment. And the challenges we faced with this, um, with this setup for uh, securing data. So why can't data be open? Um, if you're thinking about uh, open street map or something like that, you're probably thinking, yeah, great, um, open data, we love it, um, and you know, we, want, we have open source software, that's great, so we just do the same thing with data. Um, a couple of reasons. Um, one is possibly commercial. Um, uh, you know, obviously, if people create data, they want to monetize it somehow, so, um, so th there may be restrictions in that way, so, which we may have to deal with whether we like it or not. Um, the second one um, is the data may be sensitive in some way, and we, or, and we, want, to, um, we want to preserve privacy. Um, the third one might be that it's classified or something like that. I'm not concerned with that um, third reason, but it might be relevant to you. Um, it does come up in GIS, of course. Um, so, but it's the second reason, really, that's the, the um, topic of this talk, uh, or the concern of this um, talk, mostly. Um, the, uh, the Urban Observatory, um, as you'll see, provides indicator data um, uh, about different areas. Um, and whilst that data itself is aggregated, the, the source data um, that it's developed from um, it ultimately has sensitive um, sensitive information because it's it's you know has um, survey data and that kind of thing that's um, per individual. Um, so I mean, I'd love to get it into a chat with people later about the, <coughs> the where where the benefits of open data versus. Um, Privacy, but I think you can see the um, see that there is obviously going to be some data sets where, um, where the, the 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 just the inherent nature of it is that you don't you don't really want to make it open. Um, it's not actually um, good for people. So so uh, so there's sort of there's a couple of different approaches to that. And as I said, we're not we're not um, sharing that source source data, we're sharing the aggregated data, but nevertheless, there are still some security concerns. Um, the other aspect of this is that um, we're looking for um, an out-of-the-box solution. We, we don't have the resources to, to go and build our own security system from scratch, and that's probably not a good idea anyway. Um, and we're, we are committed to open source, um, so we don't want to go down the road of um, uh, the sort of cloud providers, which are sort of half open source, half uh, proprietary. We want a fully open source stack. So a little bit about the Urban Observatory application. Um, it is a digital platform that creates easily understood and engaging indicators for neighbourhoods. Um, and there's a tantalising screenshot, which I'm just going to move on from because we haven't launched yet. So public application, how do we, coming in um, March sometimes, probably will be the um, community edition. Um, the prototype of the application was built um, as a leaflet client with um, Node.js backend, Node.js and PostGIS backend, and that was very neat. Um, it it um, 
demonstrated that the, the user level functionality that that the uh, Center for Urban Research wanted was was uh, achievable. Um, uh, but the prototype had no authentication and no authorization um, of any kind, and it didn't really have any um, data management aspect to it. It was just sort of shove everything in Postgres however you can and, and, um, and get it out as GeoJSON, which is absolutely fine for a prototype. Um, but we need authentication and we need authorization um, for some of the reasons that I mentioned before. Um, and also we wanted to be able to uh, register, register, have users register. Um, so, so there will be um, publicly available um, data that is open in some sense, but it's um, you have to sort of at least identify yourself in some way before you can get access to it. So, GeoNode to the rescue. Um, um, I don't know how many of you have heard of GeoNode. I've been working in um, the open source geospatial world for quite a while and I'd only sort of um, vaguely heard about it up until relatively recently. I was just using a you know, geo server um, based stack or something like that um, most of the time. Um, it's comprised of geo server and post GIS but it also adds in a, um, a Django application um, which provides um, uh, yeah, I guess functionality. Uh, it was originally released in 2010, so it's been around a little while. Um, uh, yeah, it enhances the GeoServer PostGIS stack with a data catalog um, and data management tools, and it also has a uh, way that you can build your own um, um, maps and, um, and user interfaces, but we didn't use that part of it, as I'll explain. We, we, um, sort of had our custom thing that sits to, the, to one side. Um, critically, it can provide authentication by OAuth 2, and it integrates this with GeoServer um, to do authorization and um, find grain permission controls and that kind of thing um, with uh, GeoServer and uh, GeoFence. So what does that look like? What does it look like to integrate with GeoNode? Um, as I said, you can build um, web mapping applications into GeoNode. That's sort of how it's intended to be used. That isn't how we use it. We actually um, took the prototype um, Urban Observatory application and we ran it up beside Geo GeoNode, which presented some challenges, but it, it has some advantages as well. Um, so you, as I said, you, you run it up beside GeoNode um, and then we use an Nginx web proxy um, to tie everything together so it's all in the same domain. And, um, the the, we've got separate components, but they all, they all work together as one. Um, and the observatory application authenticates with GeoNode to access GeoServer. So it's using GeoNode's OAuth, our, uh, the observatory application is authenticating with GeoNode's OAuth, and then it's using the access token that it gets from there to uh, request data from GeoServer. Uh, there's a little diagram GeoServer is what's called the relying party, and GeoNode is the OAuth provider. Uh, and uh, as I said before, GeoNode provides the fine-grained permissions and groups that we need. So it has a tool where we can go in and configure, you know, there's, this group of users has access to this um, set of data, um, read versus write, etc. cetera. Um, and it, GeoNode um, handles all that with GeoServer, which is a which is um, really important because um, you know, there are ways you can do these sorts of solutions um, with GeoServer directly, um, but we are uh, looking you know, where, where possible, um, it's very helpful if someone's already um, set that up. Um, and the, yeah, the observatory client communicates with both GeoNode and GeoServer. Some page scraping is involved. Um, so this is where um, by keeping our application somewhat separate. It, we did add some difficulty for ourselves in some ways. Um, GeoNode doesn't have um, a REST-like library for its authentication or anything like that. So um, we're, we're using its, um, its front-facing web, uh, web client as, as a 
API, but it's, it's, um, it's not too bad because you, yeah, everything's on the same domain, as I was saying before. Um, I'm looking into um, patching Duno you know, to make that case a little bit um, more straightforward. Um, yeah, but it works. Um, so the other aspect of this, um, in terms of making this, um, this solution um, as out of the box and straightforward as possible, is deployment with Docker. Um, for those of you that are not familiar with Docker, maybe you're not, um, here's a little quote. Docker is a computer program that performs operating system level virtualization, also known as containerization. And if you didn't know what Docker was before, you probably still don't get a lot out of that. Um, the, um, the point is that we can run different components of our system as if they're on their own operating system even though they're all on the same host, and we can, we can control that to some extent, not to a great extent. Um, and then Docker Compose is a container orch orchestration system, so we can, so Docker defines how those containers work in and of themselves. Docker Compose uh, is about how um, the co components work together. Um, a Geonode um, comes with um, Docker configuration and a Docker Compose configuration. So that's, that was a great help to us. Um, all we had to do um, is take the Docker, com the, the uh, Geonode Docker Compose file and make our own version of that that included our observatory application as an additional component. Um, there's a little bit more to it than that. But, um, and we also created a custom NDX Docker image for our web proxy, including various different um, um, proxying aspects. Um, but it, again, it was taken from the, the default Geonode one and just a, a modified version. Um, so how about that out of the box security I was sort of hinting at, how, how straightforward is it? Well, um, not quite. Um, as I said, integrating custom applications requires some page scraping. Um, you'd, look, you wouldn't have to do that if you, if you didn't want to keep your application separate in the way that we did. Um, and it's not too onerous. Um, and it doesn't, it doesn't really impinge on the security aspect of it, um, it but it does impinge on the out-of-the-box aspect of it. Um, this, <laughs> this one it does impinge on the security aspect of it. The default credentials for Django and GeoServer are not secure. That is, when if you run up a Geonode straight out of the Git repository and you put that on the open web, you will have um, <laughs> the default Django admin credentials and the default GeoServer admin credentials, and they'll be out there. And, and um, I don't want to say too much more about that, but um, you, you might find some interesting things if you start Googling for live Geonode instances but not ours. Um, the OAuth system requires some setup is another challenge. It's, um, it's not too onerous, there's just a bit of box ticking and so on, but it's um, um, just in terms of managing deployment and all that sort of thing, you have to, you have to think about that. Uh, and some challenges. Uh, it's not always clear how the security model works. Um, there is, there's quite a lot of documentation in Geonode about it, but when you get down to sort of the level of figuring out access tokens and um, what's in which cookie and what you need, that's a, a, bit, more, um, a bit more of a, a trial and error thing. Um, Docker makes Geonode more difficult to administer. So again, this doesn't um, impinge on the security aspect of it, but um, Geonode has a really neat um, um, uh, command line tool that you can use to do data management um, and because Docker is made sort of each container does one thing, the Geonode images one thing is um, providing a, a web portal so uh, it doesn't expose the command line so you sort of got to fight your way into the command line on the Docker image and do things on there and it's a bit bit unpleasant. Um, perhaps one way around that is to, is to have scripts that are separate and that uh, as part of the, part, the, the scripts that call the Geonode um, 
CLI and they, they would get run uh, as the Docker image comes up or something like that. But it's it's um, it's something that the, the, the sort of the two paradigms of Docker versus GNO don't um, go together perfectly. And along the same lines, the um, the usage of Docker, the componentization of GeoNode into to Docker containers breaks the, the inbuilt GeoNode backup and replication because it uses um, PG dump and assumes you're on the same um, same host. But of course, as, as soon as you componentize it, um, containerize it um, from inside those containers, it's as if um, the database and GeoNode are on separate hosts. Um, so then the question is, do you um, work on the GeoNode side of that, or do you just use um, Docker itself to, rep to do replication? And that's still something we're, we're figuring out. Um, and another challenge that comes up, um, scalability isn't guaranteed. Again, this doesn't impinge on the security aspect of it. Um, and this is something that would happen um, uh, whatever, whatever you're doing with Docker. It's just that um, you might think that if you if you have a have a um, Docker configuration, a Compose configuration, then you, you can just automatically scale up all your images in a Kubernetes instance or something like that. But um, you still have replication issues, so you, you, your database won't scale up because um, you, you can't just if you've got a live database, you can't just scale it up like that. Uh, that's it. Questions. Um, I'll just ask, you, you said it doesn't, GeoNode doesn't have an API, so... Uh, it does have some APIs, but for the specific use case of, um, of authorization, authentication, it doesn't okay. have it. it so it, we're, doing a, we're doing a form post when ideally you do a, like a, a restful post. A form. I can talk you through the <laughs> details. Of it. It, does, it does have APIs. For, uh, do you know if GeoNode has any federation capability with other authentication providers like Active Directory or LDAP? Uh, I know that we can. So we're using GeoNode as the OAuth provider, I believe, um, and we're going to look into this in the future. You can use other OAuth providers. I couldn't tell you for certain about Active Directory. I, th I, I know there is some stuff for GeoServer and Active Directory. Um, yeah. But yeah, there are, there are ways to tie in with other um, authentication providers. I just had a question uh, as to w when you're looking at um, approaches for being able to protect data, um, were there any that dealt with feature level um, permissions and requests? Um, so yeah, I wanted to, there's only so many things I can fit into a talk. What I wanted to say is that um, one of the advantages of this system is that we can just take, um, we can potentially instance our um, Docker environment and have you know, internal um, internal systems where you um, have the really sensitive data and then you have different systems for different different broad categories of, of, of data. So that would sort of be the approach that if I had specific features that I wanted to restrict, um, I'd probably manage it almost with different instances. You can do per layer, of course, as I mentioned. Um, so, yeah, per feature would be tricky, and I don't think GeoNode supports that. Um, but yeah, there might be there might be ways to do that in effect, but um, by dividing up your data somehow, it might be easier. 